fingers and furious. Parental guidance is supplies. Attention ladies and gentlemen, the ages has arrived and I advise that everybody takes a seat to bear with this the amazing build of ages. And you don't touch that. Oh, hey, everyone. Um, uh, yeah. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of our Clam Model build. This time, we are going to build Aegis for the Gat X series. And in this video, I would like to show you how mind blowing this build is. <laughs> Aegis is just so strange. There are mixed emotions, I tell you. This build is the most weirdest build I've ever had so far. And when I say weird, it's really weird. Have you seen a starfish before? Oh, I'm not talking about that starfish. But have you seen a pink squid before? Hey, come on. I'm not talking about this cartoon. Well, those who built Aegis already knows this. Because when it's transformed to its mobile armor mode, I tell you, it really looks like a squid. It doesn't look like that, but them guys know what I mean. So, moving on, before this year end, Aegis is my last build of 2022. Building these Gadex boys has been such a wonderful experience. If you're wondering how Blitz is holding up till now, well, after 3 months, aside from the loose parts and other issues that I've mentioned from my last video, I can assure you, till now, it's still holding its own. And if you want to see how I built the bootleg Blitz, you can check out the link from the description. Of course, I can't forget the very first blog that I've ever made about Gunpla. That is thanks to L-Strike. Made some slight modification painting the shield as you can see. It's easy to notice on that angle right there. The metallic texture on it. Now side by side with Blitz and Strike, they look absolutely amazing together. Especially when I complete the Gadex boys. It's a guarantee no doubt that Gadex unit will look good in the shelf. but. We are out here to look at ages right now and in this video let's find out what are the issues and what are the fixes we can do because no matter what we say bootleg is still a bootleg so if you can't deal with the fitting issues and loose parts better you buy the original release from bandai you'll still find small issues but mindset by mindset because loose parts and fitting issue is quite common to a bootleg but hey, I ain't an expert. Not all of the issues will be the same with your build, but at least you'll get an idea of what you need to pay more attention to when you're building your own PLA model bootleg. Oh, and you gotta be very patient. Right, now let's take a look at the box art of this unit. This is an old release from Daban, so it still has the images on the box, but uh, the new release have no box art and it only have plain gray colored box with its code. Moving on, I've cooked up a simple ASMR video for those ASMR fanatics out there.
Alright, now that everything is cut out of the runner, it's time to assemble the inner frame of Aegis. Getting every part prepped and laid out ready for picking, each body part grouped together makes it easier to spot needed parts when assembling the inner frame. So if you're like me that loves to see inner frame being built first before putting the outer frame's armors, I highly recommend that you do the same setup when building your own Gundam. Building it like this is better because it's easier to fix the fitting issue and the loose parts. It's easier to spot every details of the skip when you start building the inner frame first, especially the gimmick and the things that you can uh, move in the inner frame or after the uh, kit is fully built. But anyways, these are the additional ASMR that I've added on this video. Please enjoy. Alright, assembly for the inner frame snap fit is done, it's time to combine inner frames together. My apologies as I have to attach the torso off cam because it's too hard to plug in. Here it is everyone, the full build of the Aegis inner frame. I had to admit, I am impressed. It can do the superhero landing pose. Awesome inner frame design if I may say so myself. But the details of Davin Aegis is not that crispy, it doesn't actually show that much. But nonetheless, it's still a good inner frame and there is no loose parts with minimal issues of seam lines here and there. Aside from that, there's nothing else. This inner frame is actually quite flexible and it can't stand on its own. But let's find out if the flexibility of this frame will stay the same once we've added all the armor outer frames together. And my gosh, look at how high the kick is. Its balance is ridiculous. All right, now let's move to the next phase real quick and let's add every outer frame armors together and let's see if the flexibility is still the same. A minor fitting issues here in the side skirt, it's kind of hard to push everything together.
finally, now the assembly of ages is done, it's time to discuss the issues that we have and the same format will be used which is model issues and design issues. For starters, the first issue is the left side blade, it's really loose. But this one on the other side, it has grip on it, so this is a model issue for me. Next model issue is the feet, it's too easy to remove, both left and right has the same issues. Make sure you're holding it in the right place when you're pulling it. Connection between the leg and waist unit is very awesome, there's no loose part right there. Now the next issue is this one, the back skirt, it's too easy to remove, it's loose. Now the next issue is this attachment right here. Forcing to push this will pop the chest lock out. This is another mole issue and as you can see it does not fit. That is because of the back issue uh, that we have here. It doesn't go in deep so I have to trim this one. Yet another model issue on the shoulder gimmick, if you push that, it disconnects. Both sides has the same issues. And that's about all the issues that I've found with this kit. They're all model issues from Daban, so you will not encounter these issues with Bandai. To fix the minor issue of this bootleg, just apply tact it and it should solve the issues. Moving on, the next thing to check is the articulation of this kit. Let's find out if it can really hold the same articulation we've seen in the inner frame. And by articulation, let's also check the other gimmicks that this kit has to offer. First thing I'll mention is the feet articulation is very good. There's two point connection for the feet armor and the flaps can be moved up and down like so. Both of the side left and right leg has the same function. Next one to mention is the ball joint for the calf, the ankle and the feet connection. There's decent amount of movement for this part. You can pivot this front and back like that, left and right now if you pop this out as you can see here there's two ball joints for the calf the ankle and the feet so definitely you'll be able to move that freely you can actually turn this to 360 if you like as you can see right here what i'm doing right now it actually turns this one this gimmick is very awesome next is the locking mechanism at the back of the calf as you can see here you can extend it in and out to lock it in place just make sure to push the back lock again and it should be tight and secured now the next thing to check is the knee bend let me uh, bend this for you real quick like that and as you can see that's a good angle right there that is very impressive so far it upholds the flexibility that we see on the inner frame now let me extend this forward again and as you can see good articulation good angle as well but that's the maximized height of the leg because of the front skirt if we move it to the side that is the same for the side skirt this part right here stops the leg from going upward further Next is the waist and leg connection right here, very impressive as you can see compared to Blitz. This one is not loose, let's move this at the back and that's the highest angle. Last to mention is this rotation right here, you can do it on the left and right leg. Now the waist unit has this same gimmick right here. I'm very impressed for a bootleg that this piece right here is not loose. Now let's split the leg. Again, very good articulation. As you can see here, if not for the side skirt, this could go higher. And there you are, no loose part, even if I wiggle it. Now the question is, can it maintain the balance? Let's take a look. At first, I didn't believe it, but after seeing it with my own eyes, wow. What a life changer despite the heavy back fin, shoulder, and side skirt. Moving on, the next one to check is the side skirt. As you can see, you can move it like that in front and backward. Limited articulation for the side skirt. There's supposed to be a locking mechanism in this one. And as you can see on the articulation, you can move it up and down. Extend the side skirt thruster like that. You can do it both on the upper and the lower end of the side skirt. Next one to check is the front skirt. We can remove the lock and pull it down. No loose parts here, you can turn this 360 as you can see and you can also wiggle this left and right that is also true on the other side now the next one is the middle section let me just move it up like that if the lock is not touched this one can be moved upward and downward there's two connections there and here is the empty slot for the lock this is the lock that you need to put there that is very small so be careful this one is kind of loose if the lock is not attached but in the right angle this is very hard wait that sounds wrong um, anyways just make sure to push the lock on the front skirt and this part is no longer 
movable. Moving on, the back skirt is still annoying. As you can see, you can move it up and down, but it's easy to detach. Okay, now the next one is the waist. Sadly, that's about the maximum angle for the waist because of the side skirt issue. Even if we move it there, left and right. But if we move the hindrance for the back fin and the, the side skirt, we can definitely turn this 360 as you can see here. No casualty was reported when I'm turning this into 360. The Gundam is still in one piece. So now the next one is the movement for front and back and that's the maximized movement. Left and right, that is a maximized movement on the waist. Next one is the movable chest piece. This can be moved up and down. This one is the slot for the lock right here. This is easy to attach. Just make sure that you push this down on that lock section and that should be locked into place. You can also detach the whole front chest cockpit. And if the chest piece is not locked into place, you can turn this into 360. You can move the cockpit as well. And this is where you put the pilot in. I'm not going to put Athra in there for the time being, so let's close that. Now the next one is the back fin for the transformation. I had to trim the back part so that it can fit. Now the next one is the arm articulation. Let's see how high this arm will go. Again, good articulation. Very flexible because of the ease points of connection right here that you can move. Now let's try to bend the arm downward. And as you can see, that is quite a good angle for the arm and wrist. Because of its flexibility, moving the arm around is very easy. Look at that angle right there. Let's me the movement in and out. This is the outward movement. This is the inward movement covering the whole face. This can be moved when you transform the ages. This one as well, same as on the leg. And this can be extended the same as on the leg for the transformation later on. The design of the shoulder and the leg part is the same. This is for the transformation later. It will look like a squid. And this can be turned 360. This can also turn 360. Almost every point can be turned 360. Bending the shoulder up and down. As you can see, the same gimmick is visible for the shoulder and the leg part. This one has the same gimmick. This can be moved front and back, as you can see. Now let's try the arms. This can turn as long as there's no hindrance, but if you lock it in place, you can't move it. The whole arm can turn 360 so long as there's no hindrance. That is very nice. And you can extend this further for the transformation. Similar movement on the feet. You can have this forward. There's a two-point connection like this one on the armor. You can put the beam saber on the blade and on the feet for the effect. Moving the head is very easy. As you can see here, we can turn this 360, move it up and down like that left and right angle that is very nice and this back fin can be moved up and down as well this upper fin can also move up and down that is about everything you need to know for the articulation now let's move on to transforming the kit and how you will do it easily let's start by extending its shoulder outward extend the arm move the feet like armor forward move the whole arm upward and connect the edges twist this around and do the same in the other arm until we get the same shape in appearance now that it's done, let's move on to the head. Extend its fin outward just like that and move the V fin to the back like that. And now let's move on to the chest. Let's remove the lock piece on the chest part. Now that the lock piece is out, let's move this backward and move the head inside like that. Move the chest piece like that, move the side skirt like this, and that's about everything. Now let's move the front skirt like this, turn the feet the same as on the arm like that. Do the same on the other side as well, like that. And you have this weird appearance for ages. Now let's move this front skirt forward and the joints inward and move this out. Turn this around and then lock it into place. Now we have a starfish looking appearance. Now let's move the lock for the feet and move it inside. Lock it into place. Bring the feet forward like this. Do the same to the rest of the arms and feet. Make it look like a tentacle like that. And the blades forward like this. This part is still loose. I really hate that. And now we have the mobile armor mode of Ages. To make it look more awesome, let's use the beam blade effect. Despite its weird transformation, this really looks amazing. Want to know what makes it more awesomer than awesome? Then let's use the shield. Put it like this in the side skirt. And as well as the uh, gun. Just make sure the adapter is attached like that. 
put it in the other side of the skirt and we have a complete mobile armor mode of ages like this it's very cool looking if you ask me transformation is not that hard it's just weird but it looks amazing i don't know if it's going to make it loose in time but let's find out in the future i'll give you additional review for this kit for a quick size comparison let's put the gn arms below and as you can see ages is not as thick as the gn arms but it's quite long as you can see right there i can't say anything else it's just one undeniably awesome kit and i recommend everyone on having this if you're into gunpla as well imagine the number of poses that you can do with this and the other units as well like this pose right here you can put strike inside of it and it looks like the same as on the anime when they're battling in this space possibility for this kit is a big thumbs up for me i just really hope that despite all the uh, transformation that i will do in the future will not loosen up the joints in the future but um let's hope for the worst because this is still a bootleg so anyways i am going to plan to buy the uh, bandai version as well because I don't want to transform this every now and then just to see the mobile armor mode and the mobile suit mode. Moving on, let's have a quick size comparison for the three units that I've already built. We have Blitz on the other side and as you can see, Aegis is taller. Now let's have Strike on the other side and Aegis still has the upper hand for the height. For the side view, Strike is much thicker. Now let's see the back of the unit and as you can see, comparing with the other unit, Aegis is wide. And strike is a little bit bulky. Aegis is still the first place for the height, even if we don't count its back fin. Now, second is the strike for the height, and the third one is blitz, as you can see here. All right, we have completed another awesome build, and what an amazing experience, despite <coughs> the uh, loose parts. But before we end this video, let's rate the Aegis bootleg of Daban. I'll be following my own rating format to all my builds moving forward called GUDFA. That stands for gimmick, articulation, design, fitting, and accessories. Starting with gimmick, you already know that there's so many movable parts with Aegis. From the head to its feet, the small movable parts on its body separates Aegis with Blitz and Strike. Thanks to its transformation feature and attached beam blades, posts aren't limited. So for that, I'd give gimmick 7 points. For the articulation, Aegis is very flexible when it comes to its arms and feet. The balance is amazing as well for being able to stand using only just one feet. Despite its big side skirts, I tried the superhero landing off cam and I guarantee that it can still do the pose. So for articulation, it's a flat 8 point. Now let's talk about the design and the only thing I could say for Aegis is unique. Of all the Galax series, Aegis has the most unique inner frame design. Outer frame armor as well where shoulder looks the same as its scalp. I just hate the pale pink color palette that they gave Aegis. Daban or Bandai could have at least mixed a little shiny purple to its palette to match the anime appearance. Design? is eight points for me next is the fitting and when we say fitting it's about how easy the snap fit is since this is a bootleg there are loose parts tight fit here and there but when standing holding its rifle and shield it doesn't fall off so i'd say ages is still sturdy fitting issue is at least minimal and it ain't something that you can't fix so for the fitting six points max is all i can give last one to check is the accessories while the accessories for ages are just four beam blade effects you'll have one long rifle with a shield similar with the anime since that's the only accessories that ages really has if this is bandai i'd be disappointed for not adding a middle blaster effect when ages transforms to mobile armor for the sake of anime accuracy accessory gets nine points man this third gunplay review tops L strike and blitz so the tier that i'll give for this bootleg is silverhead and that's about it for the third episode of the god x boys thank you to everyone that stayed and watched my mecha review for these bootleg my next build for the god x series is duo but i will upload the moonlight judge first so stay tuned oh and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button peace out